Hi, and welcome to Supernatural by Design. Today's topic will be on the significance behind total solar eclipses and the meaning behind them. I have a question. Is a total solar eclipse a sign from God? Can science prove this? This particular video was put together to show that a total solar eclipse is a sign from God because science proves it and that total solar eclipses and the meaning behind them can be found in the Bible. You see, many ancient cultures revered them to be signs of good or impending doom. We will uncover that the Bible holds them to have the same good and bad qualities. You see, this video is very important in order to understand the times that we are living in because end time events are marked by total solar eclipses as well as total lunar eclipses in addition to the constellations in which they occur, which will give us insight into their meaning. And all of this can be found in the Bible. However, because the topic is so vast and the information pertaining to it, we will break these videos up in shorter bits and focus on the total solar eclipse in this particular video. In addition, if you're familiar with my other videos in dealing with the number 11 and significant historical events, then you might remember that total solar eclipses have precluded those events, similar to 9-11. Therefore, it is my hope that you will view the total solar eclipse that happened on 821 as being a major end time sign of Christ's imminent return. In fact, we will have a separate video dedicated specifically to that event. However, in order to connect the total solar eclipse as a sign, let's take a journey into the cosmos. But first, we need a quick foundation on the science behind the total solar eclipse. So let's begin. A total solar eclipse is amazing and defies cosmic chance because the sheer probability that the moon almost perfectly covers the sun has baffled modern science. And although secular science provides some theories on how we got our moon, none address why the moon covers the sun to the level of precision that it does. In fact, scientists term a total solar eclipse as being a cosmic coincidence. Here's a quote from the American Astronomical Society, which is a part of the National Science Foundation. They state, it is an interesting coincidence that the moon should so nearly perfectly blot out the sun since there is really no physical reason why this has to be the case. The moon happens to be about 400 times smaller than the sun, but the sun happens to be about 400 times further from the earth than the moon is. Or how about this quote from the Scientific American Journal? The two bodies appear almost exactly the same angular size in the sky, about half a degree, which is roughly half the width of your pinky finger seen at arm's length. This truly remarkable coincidence is what gives us a total solar eclipse. And so what makes it a remarkable coincidence? Well, it's because the sun's mass is so large that it's highly unlikely that as small as the moon is, it would cover the sun to the level of accuracy that it does. You see, the sun's mass is huge, like 1.989 times 10 to the 30th kilograms, which makes up 99.86% of the mass of the entire solar system, which is absolutely amazing to realize that Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Saturn, Jupiter, Uranus, and Neptune, along with the asteroid belt, combined only make up 0.14% of the rest of the solar system. And so with that said, the Earth is 0.01 times the diameter of the Sun, meaning that you can fit 100 Earths from end to end across the Sun. In addition, the Earth just happens to orbit the Sun in a very small window of space, making it even possible for life to observe a total solar eclipse, whereas the moon is a quarter of the mass of the earth, and it is the heavenly body that causes the near-perfect eclipse of the sun. And so therefore, it is because of these two main variables that the probability of having it happen randomly is zero. Because in order to have the sun, the moon, and the earth line up to that degree of accuracy during a total solar eclipse defies probability due to the fact that the sun could be many times smaller or bigger, which is the same that could be said with regard to the moon and the earth. In addition, the distances between all three could range in infinite possibilities as well. And so, to have one chance 
over as many possibilities that each variable could have, and for each object, when multiplied across, is zero. Now with all that said, there are only two ways that this could have happened, which is determinism versus randomness, in order to arrive at the perfect set of circumstances that would cause the moon to perfectly eclipse the sun, because it is either a chain of random events by inevitable set of accidents, which would mean no overall purpose, or it is deterministic, meaning there is a purpose behind why the moon perfectly eclipses the sun, which implies that a total solar eclipse has a purpose, which alludes to a designed solar system, because the sun and the earth would have to be placed in those locations on purpose, which is interesting to note because that's exactly what we read in Psalms 8.3 with regards to the moon. And because the math proves that it couldn't have happened randomly, we therefore know that a total solar eclipse has a purpose. However, what is that purpose? Well, to find out what the purpose of a total solar eclipse is, we need to investigate the origins behind the sun and the moon. And in order to do that, we need to take a quick journey back into time. The origins for the sun and the moon can be found in Genesis chapter 1, in fact, on the fourth day of creation, where the sun is called the greater light and the moon the lesser light. However, in verse 14, the Bible indicates that the sun and the moon actually have four sub-functions in addition to illuminating the earth. And it's interesting to note that the list is in order of priority, starting with signs, seasons, days, and years. However, it's the first two, signs and seasons, when we look at their root in Hebrew, will uncover some interesting information. You see, the word for signs in Hebrew is od, which can mean an omen, a banner, or a mark of something significant, or a miracle. Whereas seasons in Hebrew is mio, which can mean an appointed time singular or appointed times as in a duration of time or period of time. Therefore, we can conclude that the sun and the moon were created to be used as marks, outlining good period times like miracles or bad period times like omens. However, how do we know specifically that a total solar eclipse and total lunar eclipse are signs? Well, that can be found in Luke 21 at the end of verse 11, in which Jesus is telling a narrative of end time events leading up to a second coming, in which he states that there will be great signs in the heavens. Later, in verse 25 of that same chapter, he states specifically what these great signs would be, that they would be signs in the sun and in the moon. However, what does that mean? Well, in Revelation 6.12, a chapter in which the same event is being described, it tells us what those signs in the sun and the moon would be, because we find out that a total solar eclipse is the sun being covered in sackcloth, whereas a total lunar eclipse is the moon turned into blood. Therefore, we can conclude from Genesis chapter 1, Luke, and the book of Revelation that the sun and the moon, and in particular when they're lined up and forming a total solar or total lunar eclipse, are signs. However, how do we know if these signs mean something good or something bad? Well, Luke 21, verse 25, gave us a clue in that signs would not only happen in the sun and the moon, but that there would be signs in the stars as well. However, to understand how a total solar eclipse is affected by the stars, we need to explore the relationship between the stars and the 12 constellations. So come, let's take a journey into the cosmos. The 12 constellations, or the zodiac, can be found in the Bible, according to Job 38, because the word constellation in Hebrew is Maseroth, and Maseroth is the Western equivalent of the 12 constellations of the zodiac. And what makes them unique? Well, according to Psalms 97, God has revealed his redemptive plan in the heavens. Therefore, at a minimum, we know that each zodiac sign represents a part of Christ's story, starting with Virgo the Virgin, which starts in the New Testament as seen in Matthew chapter 1 verse 23 and from there if you follow the zodiac all the way around it ends on Leo the lion 
which is symbolic of Christ's second coming and is found at the end of the New Testament in Revelation chapter 5 with Jesus as the lion from the tribe of Judah. With that said, we can conclude that when a total solar eclipse or a total lunar eclipse happens in one of the 12 constellations, that it is telling us where we are at in his redemptive plan, which is the greater picture or narrative being told in the skies. However, what else can be said about the 12 constellations and total solar eclipses? Well, not only is there a larger story behind the 12 constellations, but the Bible indicates that there are smaller cycles within his greater story. And how do we know that? Well, in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 through 8, we are given these smaller cycles, broken into seven sets, and each set with their own four unique traits, as you can see on the screen, totaling 28 distinct seasons, or cycles. Therefore, a total solar eclipse or a total lunar eclipse are used to mark the distinctions between each of these season types. And although it's interesting to know that the seasons listed range from good things to bad things, which can be firmly supported by looking at how other cultures associated solar and lunar eclipses with good and bad fortunes as well. An interesting example is the ancient Chinese culture, because in ancient China, noblemen associated total solar eclipses with good and bad times for the ruling emperor at that particular time, just as this quote says from Time Magazine. In fact, nearly every ancient civilization attributed total solar eclipses and total lunar eclipses as being signs of good or bad, however in most instances as bad. So the question is, how could independent cultures arrive at the same conclusion if there wasn't some sort of truth to their claim? Because as we've demonstrated, the Bible says the same exact thing. And so ultimately, what can be said about a total solar eclipse? Well, A, that the mathematics behind them suggest that they couldn't have happened randomly, therefore, that they have a purpose. And B, from reading in chapter 1 of Genesis, we learn that this purpose is for signs to mark seasons and see to mark where we are at in Jesus' plan of redemption, starting with Virgo the Virgin and ending on Leo the Lion. Therefore, my hope is, is that you view total solar eclipses as well as total lunar eclipses as being a sign from God, which is where we will end this video. Well, I just want to thank you for watching. Please make sure to hit the like, share, and subscribe button. And don't forget to hit the notification bell so you can receive all the latest content. I just want to thank you and have a blessed night.